What's up, guys? Pot Blade Pigs for life here, and today is the first episode of our new Planet Zoo playthrough. Um, so before we get started, a uh, little bit of context. So, um, if you guys remember from the two-year anniversary of Planet Zoo, I made a video giving a tour of a zoo that I've worked on off-camera called Conservation Carnival. Now, the idea with that zoo is it was supposed to be a mix of, like, a petting zoo and, like, a carnival and, um, one of those, like, drive through safaris that, like, you see those videos of, like, people freaking out when, like, the zebra sticks their head in the window or something like that. Yeah, so I created something like that. However, after visiting it again for the Planet Zoo two-year anniversary, I decided that, honestly, I could do a lot better with this zoo. So that's what we're doing for this playthrough. Um, so this playthrough is going to be called Conservation Carnival 2.0. Oh, didn't know, don't know how that happens. Anyways, so yeah, so that's what it is. So it's basically going to be Conservation Carnival 2.0. And we are going to make it a lot better. So, um, here's the plan. So, I didn't, um, build anything off camera. Okay, I did a little bit of building off camera. But I did a lot of planning where everything was going to go. Um, a bit like I've been doing in Golden Age. So, when here's the idea. So, when you first walk in, it is going to be sort of like a local wildlife center. Because this zoo is based in Texas. Um... Because also, I watched this YouTuber um, from Texas called The Urban Rescue Ranch. So this is heavily inspired by him. Um, he basically like lives down in Texas and um, rescues a bunch of animals. Um, so yeah, he's a really cool guy, so I definitely recommend checking him out. Um, but anyway, so the idea is you're going to walk in and... This is supposed to be, like, a local wildlife center, where we have, like, a l bunch of local animals, like red foxes, American alligators, pronghorn antelope, prairie dogs, beavers, skunks, and raccoons. Oh, yeah, you can't forget armadillos. almost forgot about armadillos. Um, yeah, we're gonna be using a lot of the grassland pack animals. Uh, I know it came out, like, three months ago, um... So yeah, hopefully by the time this video comes out, we have the announcement of a DLC slash update for Planet Zoo and Jurassic World Evolution 2 for that matter. Um, right over here is going to be the petting zoo section where we're going to have lots of like walkthrough animals and like animals where you can like walk through it. So like there's going to be like South America and Africa and Australia. Um, so yeah, um, this is going to be the drive through safari which is going to be, like, African animals, as well as we'll do, like, American bison, Chevalsky's horse, Bactrian camels, um, some returning animals from Samurai Sanctuary, as well as Augustus Zoo, for that matter. Um, so, the idea with the zoo is that this area is supposed to be, like, um, sort of, like, an area where, like, um, like, people, like, genuinely care for animals, and then this half of the zoo is going to be sort of designed around, like, people who, like, um, don't really, like, see the animals for what they are. So, um, but it's meant to, like, spread awareness and, like, to stop, like, animal cruelty and stuff. So, this area is going to be sort of, like, some sort of, like, dog breeder area where we're going to have, like, timber wolves and dingoes and stuff. And then this area is going to be, like, an abandoned circus ground which will have like um so i'm thinking we'll do like elephants hippos sea lions uh jaguars definitely as well as like a few other animals um but yeah i've got some ideas for these two um so i'm thinking like um so there'll be like a stadium with like cages and then we'll also do like a lake somewhere like Basically, the idea is the animals, like, somehow escaped during, like, a performance, and now they're all free, basically. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then, also, another fun idea would be to have, like, a train going all around the area, sort of like what we had at um, Conservation Carnival, the first one, 
like the first conservation carnival. Yeah, there we go. Um, I can use words correctly, I promise. Today we are going to get started on the wildlife rescue, which will be like this little area. Um, so, um, for this playthrough, um, I don't really want to rush this playthrough too much. So, because of that, we're only going to do, um, three enclosures per video. So, that's what I'm limiting myself to, three enclosures. So, yeah, um, because I haven't built a lot so far in this zoo, this playthrough, as well as, like, the next few Planet Zoo playthroughs, are going to be heavily based on time lapses and like time lapse footage so like maybe like so definitely the end and maybe the beginning will be like some commentary like you can see now but um a lot of these videos are going to be time lapses um so yeah so we're gonna start with um setting up like a basic like area for the wildlife rescue um and we're gonna do I'm pretty sure there's going to be six habitats here. We'll start with three of them. So, yeah, um, we've got quite a lot to do. Um, so, enough talking. Let's get into it. Okay, so kicking things off with the entrance of the Wildlife Rehab Center. Um, much like with Poseidon Aquarium, I also um, have the idea of doing the information center as sort of like a ticket booth. Um, and I also added in some, like, souvenir shops and what have you. Um, so, yeah, anyways, so, um, the four animals that we're doing in this episode are the red fox, the nine-banded armadillo, the pronghorn antelope, and the prairie dog. Of course, the pronghorn and the prairie dog are going to be sharing an enclosure. Um, but, um, I also did plan out... The other three enclosures, which will be for American alligators, cougars, as well as a giant mixed enclosure for beavers, skunks, and raccoons. Um, so, um, I decided to use the, um, like, green, like, grassy path that we got in the conservation pack, um, because, um... I, well, I wanted it to, like, look natural, but I also wanted it to stand out from the, like, sandy terrain in the desert. Um, so, anyways, so now, on to some animal facts. So, starting with the red foxes, um, so one thing about red foxes that I find pretty cool is that a group of red foxes is called a skulk. Well, of course, this is different from the skulk added in Minecraft, but when I heard it, it reminded me of the skulk added in Minecraft. Um, but regardless, each member of the skulk can communicate with each other using more than 20 unique and different calls. Red foxes are also known for their great sense of hearing, which can hear rodents burrowing several miles under the ground. Okay, so... Um, that's it for the red foxes. Now, moving on to the nine-banded armadillos. So, to start, the name derives from the Spanish word for little armored one. This is because armadillos are very common in Latin American countries. Um, of course, you all know that I take Spanish class in school, so obviously I have to include that fact. Um, anyways, um... Armadillos also have a very varied diet, eating almost 500 different types of foods, such as insects, arachnids, eggs, lizards, and amphibians. So, basically the exact opposite of me, because I am a very picky eater in real life. Um... And speaking of food, they also served as food for many people during the Great Depression. And even today, sometimes nine-banded armadillos are hunted and eaten by people in the southwestern United States. I mean, it doesn't seem to be hurting their population because um, nine-banded armadillos are classified as least concern. And also, scientists predict that the nine-banded armadillos range is going to increase now that um the climate is warming um as you can see adding in the red foxes i know a little bit late because i already shared the red fox facts 
um, but adding in lots of grass, a um, little bit of a pond, um, it's going to be tiny, uh, and I'm trying not to make it too deep. Um, I've, like Later on in the time lapse, I end up shrinking the pond, especially when I'm adding in the foliage, which I use the um, chunk of foliage from Europe because a lot of the foliage is the same in North America. So um, also adding some rocks around the Fox Borough. <laughs> Foxboro, because get it, it's a city in Massachusetts, um, where Gillette Stadium is. Um, all right, yeah. So speaking of Gillette Stadium, um, I apologize in advance if the next video is going to be a little bit delayed, um, because these next few weeks for me are going to be busy, such as going on a field trip to Gillette Stadium. So yeah, that's kind of fun. Um, get to skip school for. A day that also means I'm gonna have lots of makeup work so um, yeah because of that I'm sorry if the next video which it which by the way is going to be a Jurassic Park Future of Hammond's Dream season 2 video gets delayed because just know I've got lots of stuff going on for school and on top of that I also have to balance like school and like work and stuff so yeah um, lots of enrichment and um, spreading it out because, I don't know, I just do that. Uh, later on I went to add like a, um, shack in the middle of the enclosure just because. Um, like, sort of like a utility shack for the keepers. Um, I don't know. But, anyways, so as you can see right now, I am planning the, um, uh, cougar, alligator, and, um, like forest critter exhibit because it's including like beavers and skunks and um raccoons because of the um interspecies bonus so now anyway so while i'm doing this um i'm going to move on to the pronghorn antelope facts and the prey dog facts so starting with the pronghorn antelope so a lot of people misinterpret the pronghorn antelope as a species of antelope however much how like the supposed killer whale isn't actually a whale the pronghorn antelope in quotation marks isn't actually an antelope in fact it isn't even a deer either instead it is the only surviving member of an extinct family called Antilocapridae. On top of that, the pronghorn is the fastest land mammal in North America, reaching top speeds of 60 miles per hour. Um, they have this adaptation because during the last ice age, they lived alongside predators such as the American cheetah, which is now extinct. And so what's incredibly unique about the pronghorn is that not only do they have incredible speed, but they also have amazingly long stamina. To put that into sort of context, the cheetah, which is the fastest land mammal on Earth, can only run at its top speed for about 60 seconds. So because of that, it relies on short sprints and ambush hunting to catch prey. Meanwhile, the timber wolf, which we will also include in this playthrough, um has great stamina, being able to run long distances to tire out prey, but that means they can't run as fast. However, the pronghorn antelope can run at high speeds while also being able to run long distances. Um, as you can tell, I'm probably not going to stop calling it a pronghorn antelope. Just know that they aren't in any way, shape, or form related to antelope. Um, so yeah, so now moving on to the prairie dog, which will be sharing its enclosure with the pronghorn antelope. Prairie dogs are very crucial to a healthy prairie ecosystem in ways that we might not even realize. So, for example, their burrows serve as shelters for jackrabbits, toads, rattlesnakes, and black-footed ferrets, one of the many predators of the prairie dogs. Also, whenever they create a new burrow entrance, the surrounding dirt that was dug up often attracts different types of insects, which are eaten by many types of birds, which is very, like, minor, um, but it's still cool nonetheless that this tiny little animal can make such a huge impact on its ecosystem. Um, 
And on top of that, the Prairie Dog has one of the most advanced communications of any other animal other than us humans. And so, researchers have found that prey dogs can communicate very specific details about their surroundings. Um, the website where I got the uh, prey dog facts from said that they could even communicate intricate details as to what colored shirt somebody is wearing, which is incredible that such a tiny little animal has that much capability. So it just goes to show you that you should never underestimate the abilities of animals in nature. So, um, yeah, that's it for animal facts. So right now, um, we're doing the pronghorn and prairie dog exhibit, uh, adding in some foliage. Um, but recently I was thinking of some ideas for this zoo. Um, and it started with, um, the idea that what's going to be different about this zoo is that instead of being one ginormous zoo, it's going to be a bunch of smaller zoos mixed into one. So, for example, the wildlife refuge will be one, then the petting zoo, then the safari, and then instead of the abandoned circus, I think we're going to do sort of like a carnival where um, there's going to be this giant indoor auditorium where, like, um, the animals can, like, go in and, like, um, do some educational shows, but they'll also have some outdoor enclosures. And then I've got a whole idea for the um, dog breeder thing, which will um, house the Timberwolves, the Dingoes, and the, um, maned wolves, um, and so, um, part of that being, um, what's gonna connect the different zoos is basically, we're not just building a zoo, we're building an entire town, so basically, um, what I'm doing now is I am making a road, um, and there's going to be a tunnel, which, like, sort of, like, goes underground, I guess. Um, I'm gonna put, like, a barrier so that way the guests can't go that way. And, um, there's also going to be some, like, black, um, like, shadow indicating that the, um, tunnel leads off to some sort of, like, civilization, I guess. So, um, and... Um, another thing that you're gonna see in a little bit is I got a palette for, um, a bunch of, like, in-game structures that would make good, like, houses and, like, um, street buildings in, like, this part of the world. Um, so nothing too crazy, but, like, it's gonna be a mix of, like, um, like, European, but also, like, um... Australian, a little bit of African, um, because I've got some ideas for, um, like, potential, like, restaurants, um, oh yeah, and also aquatic, I completely forgot about that, but yeah, so, um, I think it might be better to explain it to you more at the end of the time lapse, but, um, yeah, another thing that I did, um, in this time lapse was I started a little train route. Um, I also um, lined up some of the houses as well as made like a little parking lot for a restaurant. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, so really hope you guys enjoyed the rest of this time lapse and I will see you at the end of the video.
All right, so this is what we got so far. Um, so for the first episode, I don't think we did half bad. In fact, this place looks awesome. Um, so yeah, so we got the Red Fox closure, which already they had babies! Oh, little puppies! Little fox kits. Oh, and my game isn't so slow. That's so great. Also, one thing I did differently was I limited the amount of guests at the start. So, the maximum amount of guests is only like a thousand guests. Maybe I'll increase it, maybe I won't. Uh, I don't know. Ooh, and, um... Oh, no. I, th I thought these guys had babies. No. It was just, um, someone... It was just one of them coming back from quarantine. So, anyways, so, um... So, this is what I was talking about earlier. So, right here we've got the train station, which I need to, like, get online. What's up with this? Oh, it's too crowded here. Ah, that's an issue. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we've got all sorts of, um, buildings here. Um, so some of these really aren't, like, facilities. They're just, like, they're meant to be, like, households, I guess, if you were to put it that way. Um, this is a staff room, though. Um, and we've got all sorts of different houses, and we've got the toilets. Um, we snuck those in there, too. Um, so, anyways, so here's my idea for the, um, here's my idea for the dog breeder section. Basically, we're just gonna scrap it, because what we're gonna do is instead this little area over here, we're going to have be, like, a bunch of, like, we're gonna have the exhibits be here, because the idea is they're going to look as if they are, um, they're gonna look as if they are, like, somebody's house, and it's just their dogs, like, running around the house. So, that's sort of what I was thinking. Oh yeah, and also here's the train station. Um, not too special, just like a parking lot where like people like can wait for the train. Um, but yeah, so basically like right along here, we're gonna have like an area for dingoes, an area for wolves, and then we might have to put the main wolves um, like somewhere else. But yeah, and so basically they're um, the exhibits are gonna look as if they're like someone's house and like um we'll probably use like the um like australian shelter um and um so yeah so um i'm thinking like this would especially be like good for the dingoes and like it would be like right on the back here and then maybe we can do something for the timber wolves like um Yeah, something like that might work. And honestly, who knows? Maybe I'll just use the same thing for the Timberwolves. Something like this. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah. So, um... Yeah, that's my idea. For the, like, um... For those animals. And then, um... Honestly, I can't believe that we haven't even used, like... We haven't even used half of the area that I gave for the, uh, animal, or for the wildlife rescue. So, um, because of that, we've got way more space to work with. Um, and, um, so yeah, so basically, uh, like I said, what we're gonna do for, um, the, um, carnival is... Basically, it's gonna be a carnival where, like, um, I think this, like, market stall looks really, really nice. Uh, the only thing is we're gonna replace the Street Fox Coffee with, like, some, like, souvenir shops. Um, and, um, we're going to have lots of food trucks. 
And I also, um, in the first Conservation Carnival, I thought of a really nice idea for a, um, a bounty house. Um, so we'll include that. And also, I'm thinking we can use some of the hedges as maybe, like, a maze. So, um, yeah. And that's all gonna be surrounding a giant stadium, which, um... So there'll be three sections of the stadium. So there's going to be the first section, which will be split between elephants and hippos. The next section will be outdoors for um, sea lions. And the third section will be um, uh, bears, jaguars, and hyenas. So now the idea for those, for the first one and the third one, is that it's going to be like, an, it's going to be a completely empty stadium. But the idea is there's going to be gates, so that way, um, during, like, a specific time of day, the animals would go into the stadium, and the keepers would do a little talk about them. Um, and, um, so yeah, and then all the animals would get an outdoor enclosure for when they're not, like, doing, like, a keeper talk. But yeah, so... Um, a few ideas changed, but honestly, I like these new ideas a lot better. And then, of course, we don't really need to change too much about the petting zoo and the safari, let alone the, um... Uh, my mouse is acting weird. Let alone the, um, uh, wildlife rehab, which, speaking of, um, next episode, we're going to do, uh, the last three habitats. This is gonna be the big, like... Um, uh, raccoon, skunk, and beaver enclosure. This, I think, is gonna be for alligators. This is gonna be for cougars. So the idea is, um, we're going to have, um, a little bit of, um, like, water going through each of the exhibits because this area is gonna be sort of like a wetland environment. Um, so with, like, the alligators especially and the beavers too. Um, they need a lot of wetland. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna make it go through all three of the enclosures. Um, and that will be the plan for next episode. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. Really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If so, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to see some more Minecraft, Planet Zoo, and Jurassic World Evolution 2 content. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.